What we have here is a Whirlpool top load washing machine. And uh, what it's been doing for the last couple of months is it seems like it's washing the clothes and it'll go through the full uh, cycle and then at the end it'll tell you, hey, it's done. And when you open up the washing machine, what you'll find is that the clothes are completely soaking wet and haven't actually uh, been through the spin cycle. So what's happening is the washing machine will wash, it'll go through maybe even the rinse cycle, but then it doesn't spin the clothes dry. And um, what you can do is, uh, or what I've figured out troubleshooting it, is that you can actually manually make it with the symptoms that's going on here, manually make it go into spin mode. So if you turn the knob and uh, send it into you know, drain and spin mode, it will actually drain the clothes. So mechanically, nothing is wrong with the spin cycle, but what's happening is the washing machine will not automatically go into spin cycle. And after doing some reading around, um, what it looks like or sounds like based on the internet is the, uh, the shift actuator has gone out and isn't telling the washing machine to automatically go into the, to the uh, spin cycle. So I bought a replacement part online and we're going to, it was probably about 60 bucks, 50 bucks, something like that. Um, what we're going to do is replace that today and see if it makes a difference. There are a couple of tools that you're going to need for this repair. In my case, for my washer, what I needed was a Phillips head screwdriver and an eight millimeter socket. And that was pretty much it for taking the bolts out and putting them back in. Those were the only tools that were necessary. Step one in the repair process is to unplug everything attached to the washing machine. So unplug it from the wall and turn off the water supply lines and disconnect them from the back of the washing machine. Now you may want to have a towel ready when you do this because you'll have a little bit of water come out of the, the actual you know, the little connection points there. So step one, unplug everything. Step two in the repair, tape down the top. Step three is to lay the washing machine on the front. That's why you tape down the lid so that when you do this, the lid doesn't swing open. You might want to have a couple of towels laid out. Um, if you've used the washer before, there's going to be water in the... Uh, inside of it so you may get a little bit of water but with a couple of towels here you should be able to catch all the water that may come out. Alright now that the washer is turned over you can expose the bottom mechanism of the washing machine and the next step is to remove this plastic cover here, which is held on by two eight millimeter screws, one on the top there, and then one down here on the bottom. So on my model, it's a eight millimeter uh, regular socket that's needed to take this piece off. So with that plastic cover removed, you can actually now see the uh, shift actuator there which is bolted to the bottom. Um, so the next step really is there's a wiring harness here that needs to come out. There's a couple of uh, little clips in the back that you have to press down as you remove it. If you do that, push them down, work it out. The wiring harness comes out pretty easy. All right, with the wiring harness removed, you are now ready to take the old shift actuator off of the, the washing machine. And that is accomplished by taking two screws. And on mine, for some reason, they're colored green. 
um, but there's one there and then you've got another one down here that needs to be removed. So something else to note about this when you're taking it off is there is a little plastic knob that's that's off of the shift actuator that needs to go or is looped through this this other plastic piece back here. And that'll become important when you're installing the, the new shift actuator. But it's relatively simple. You take these two screws off, they're standard uh, Phillips head, and um, you're ready to completely remove the old shift actuator. Here are the uh, the new shift actuator and the old shift actuator uh, sitting side by side. This is the uh, the new one that I was able to order uh, off the internet. And here is the existing one. And something that, that you might notice, at least on mine, the wiring harness that connects to uh, the existing unit that came off of the, the washing machine, the, the wiring harness plugs into the top. But on the, the new one, the wiring harness plugs into the side. So you'll want to check to make sure that the wiring harness will actually plug into it. I've already pre-checked mine and it does, um, but the, uh, the, the two units side by side, um, the new one and the, the old one. Here's the new shift actuator installed. As you can see, the, uh, the green screws fit quite nicely and um, pretty easy. They're, they pretty much line up automatically. Uh, screwed back in and then the plastic knob is plugged back into the the hole there so we are ready to I haven't plugged the harness in yet but ready to plug this back in and put the old and put the, uh, put the plastic cover back on here is the finished product wiring harness installed which seems like on the shield here they left a little groove kind of a nice little groove for the wire to go through but now that's plugged in the, uh, the guard there is reinstalled, and we're ready to see if all this uh, made a difference. So one thing you are likely to notice is that when you flip the machine back up, you're probably going to have water uh, coming out of the front. It's uh, basically a result of when you lay this on its side, water comes out of the uh, the main um, mechanism of the washing machine and it just gets onto the, the metal surface here. And then when you flip it back up, it's going to roll out and come down. So as you can see, you probably do want to have, uh, have a towel ready to help stop that up. Uh, but don't be alarmed by that. That's, that's fairly normal. There are a few things attached to the washing machine that you're going to need to. I didn't record earlier, but uh, in the reinstall, I thought I might want to go over a little bit more. But um, you've got uh, four different things that uh, that you need to disconnect and then uh, ultimately reconnect once the repair is done. But you've got the water supply lines, which are here. The red is the hot water, blue is the cold water. You've got the drain line that uh, that goes into the drain comes from the the washing machine and then goes into the the drain in the wall there and then you've got the the plug that sends power uh, to the washing machine itself but the these steel braided hoses and they may be rubber in your case um, but anyway the the ones that attach to the wall here the water supply lines ultimately come over and plug into the back of the washing machine and these are color coordinated as well with blue being cold red being hot but one thing that you want to make sure of when you reinstall these is that there's no there's no drip coming from the bottom you want to make sure that you got a good seal uh, or else you'll end up with water on the on all over the place really once you reconnect it but once you make those connections and you turn the the knobs back on you shouldn't have any uh, any dripping coming from those lines All right, final step here is to run a load of laundry and see um, if this 
if the uh, the repair here has fixed your problem. The good news is, is if you use some towels as part of your your project, you have the uh, you already have a load of laundry that you need to do. So uh, we'll see. We'll run this and make sure that uh, that everything worked, or we may be doing another repair video.